Iker. We are here at Dark Horse Studios in Franklin, Tennessee. Tucker Bethard released his new album, King, and today he and several of the songwriters that he wrote this record with are going to play a few songs for you. Hey, everybody. It's Tucker Bethard, and I'm here with the, uh, the ones behind the scenes that you don't get to see that contribute to what I do, and, and specifically to this album, King. And these are the writers. We got Phil Donald, Marla Cannon, my dad Casey Bethard, and Ryan Tyndall. And we're here. We're gonna play some of the songs on the album and kind of have fun and talk about them and just give you all a behind the scenes look of kind of the stuff that you don't get to see on the surface. Um, <laughs> well, you can talk if you want. <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna do a little can't stay here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start off, this is the uh, first song I wrote um, in 2020. I was, uh, wanted to just start making music, you know, to start, to start the year off and kind of get warmed up. And Why did you call Ryan then and not me? Well, yeah. he, called, he called me. <laughs> I, checked, I got canceled on, so I don't remember who it was. I got canceled on, so I kind of tripped into it. Yeah, it lined up perfectly because I was just going to go with my buddies Joe and, and Will and just, you know, mess around with Pro Tools or something, and then Ryan... I was like, hey, man, I don't know if you're doing anything, but I'm free if you want to write today. And I was like, perfect. Come, on, come along. And, uh, I came real close to going home. I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, me too. I mean, I, <laughs> Even though even, we, we planned on riding, but we really weren't going to ride. <laughs> we were yeah, just oh, going to yeah. I, I had no intentions of actually trying to write a song by any means. <laughs> but uh, it's funny how that's usually when the best songs yeah, come along. So anyways, this song is uh, this song's called Can't Stay Here.
it goes Woo. good old country and western on that. One. <laughs> That's the countryest song I think I've ever heard you do. No way, man. <laughs> it's one of the countryest songs you've ever done. It don't, I don't, you think it's country? I think it sounds one of the most, is anybody, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's a question for your fans. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean. I, think I mean, you could uh, put twin fiddles on that song. That's it's a two-stepping song. See, I was thinking more like, <laughs> like. It's more of a cowboy Beach Boys. Yeah, yeah, it's like a cowboy It's got a little song. California thing. It's California something too. It's a little yeah. bit. It's California cool. Gold. Mm-hmm. A little Bakersfield in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely more country than a lot that's on this album, that's for sure. Yeah. 2010's got some country in it. Yeah, I was going to say, 2010 or or Find Me Here. How did you get country in that? (laughs) You're talking about two southern college football teams, man. Plus, it's about grass seed. Yes. 1010. No, no, it's fertilizer. Fertilizer. Yeah. There's a difference. We were hanging out... um, it was like 2015, and um, me and Phil Billy wrote um, earlier in the day, and and my dad and somebody else were writing in town, and and um, we ate lunch and ended up meeting up with my dad, and we were hanging out. Thought the day was over, and um, just hanging out talking, and and he said, uh, Phil Billy, who's from Canada and doesn't know anything about football, he yells out. 1010 10, Tennessee. I didn't even I didn't even know you were talking about fertilizer this whole time until today. I, I, I do. I remember that that him going, man. I thought there there might be something in this this fertilizer 10, 10, I saw. Tennessee. You know, it just said 1010 10, Tennessee, and I'm it's like, so we got to be careful. This might be a title. good. We may have to give like co-op piece of. Might it be or like a you know if it's a hit, a score, a football mm. score or something, and I was. Yeah, yeah. Me, me and my dad naturally thought he, you were talking about the score of a football game. And well, I was when we got to the Tennessee, but 10-10 ten, ten, Tennessee. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Anyways, we heard, we uh, <laughs> took that and... Uh, naturally, yeah, that's my favorite sport, his favorite sport, so we naturally <laughs> went that direction with it. <laughs> we, uh, I mean... Ended up with a good heartbreak song and... Yeah. Phil learned a lot about football during writing this one. <laughs> Crash course. He's going to Alabama fan. This is called 2010 Tennessee. Just wondering where you are I woke up late I think the game's about to start And you know where I'll be Just sitting here at home Let's go Tennessee Just went down third and go A fake reverse in the round Even for the referee Just had to let you know It's seven zip Tennessee Tennessee 
got real close but Just like you we pulled away Almost at the bridge But it ain't over yet And I hold on to Tennessee Should have been another best day of my life, but girl, I feel kind of like the crimson tide. The time running out on me, but no hell, Mary chance. Twenty ten, Tennessee. That's country. That's, That's country. a country story. That's what country you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. When's the last time that Tennessee beat? Not in my lifetime that I can remember. Has it ne- seriously? Seriously? Not that I'm, unless I was like super young and can't remember, but I haven't seen it. Wow. Somebody, I'm curious. Somebody have Google on their phone? And just Google it. <laughs> I have a Coke bottle from when they went to the Sugar Bowl one time. Still has Coke in it. Yeah, they had to, it had to be in your lifetime. I mean, they had to... Oh, yeah, Tennessee won a national championship, championship. right? Uh, yeah, because I guess Peyton meant. Well, they probably didn't have a championship. Did, did they have champion? Did they have SEC championship games then? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. They were good know. in the '80s. Huh? I wasn't they born in the '80s. Really, That's but they were really good then. Oh yeah, you weren't born for sure. If it's if they haven't beat Alabama since '95, then not in my lifetime. <laughs> That's nuts. <clears throat> So yeah, this one, um, the next one that we're going to do, I think it'll always be one of my favorites just because it, it holds such true time. Like it, It's a song that really represents a time where, where I was in my life when we wrote this. I wrote this with, with Phil Billy. And, um, and it's funny, I remember, I remember um, we had the, the, the idea and the, the title and we were with a guy named Monty Criswell, and um, we had the idea of if Jesus come, if Lord, if you come back, I hope you don't find me here. And um, and I'll, ne- I'll never forget. I was, you know, thinking, all right, well, how do you want to do this? Because this could go one of two ways. You know, it can it could be the most gut punching, heart string pulling song in, in the world, or you can just, you know, have fun with it. And you know, oh, you're partying, yeah, God, I hope you don't come back. You know, like. That idea, and I remember I asked, I was like, do we do it like that? And Phil, Phil was like, no, man, if we're going to do this song, we need, to, we need to do it. And I'm always down for getting, Gritty. getting emotional with it. <laughs> and um, I'm glad we did, because this song really, um, really represents a time where I was in my life. Um, I was just living for all the wrong things and found out how how empty it really leaves you at the end of the day and a cool story there was um did a little a video for it in Nashville um and we had to find like a really run down hotel in um kind of a scarier place in town you know um, a rougher place in town had to find the right looking hotel and, and we found one and was out in the parking lot and we were filming, filming the takes over and over and had to play it, the song through a little, a little, a little like speaker, a little speaker that um, so I can match the words up with my mouth for the video and um and I, and I saw this guy that was hanging around the whole time. You see, he was kind of lingering around. I mean, he he um he seemed intrigued by something. I like just kind of lingering around and, and um but I didn't think much of it and then we took a break in the in the middle of the day and I 
walked over to my truck and was walking back to the set in, in the parking lot and he stops me and he says, hey man, hey, um, are you, is that 316 in that song? Um, you talking about John 316? And I was, that alone caught me off guard. I mean, I was like, mm. yeah, man, that's, that's exactly right. You, I'm, I'm surprised he even heard it, let alone was listening to the words. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, yeah, dude, that's exactly right. What, like, what's up? You know, like, tried to start, you know, talking and he, something, something, he got something touched. This song pulled something on his heart to where he was, um, he started trying to tell me something and, and he just, he couldn't get it out because he just started breaking down crying, just breaking down wow. crying and trying, like, trying to express something that this, that this song did for him. And, um, and it was just, it's a moment I'll never forget. And, and, it, and I think it's, um, as songwriters, correct me if I'm wrong, that's kind of what you write for. In my opinion, like that, seeing a song do that for someone, I mean, I'll take that over over a watered down number one any day. Well, the the uh, miraculous thing is that that part, that part, it was like God's word stuck out to that guy at that time and did something in his heart to just maybe it saved his life, maybe it changed his life, but if nothing else. Maybe that's all that song is good for, and if that's what it does, is save one life. No kidding, that's awesome. uh, awesome. I'm no prophet or nothing like that, but I think we'll get to talk about it with him. I hope so. I I, I never got to figure out what it was because he he just couldn't get it out, man. He was he was. It just really got to him. He turned his life back around. He was overcome. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, that's awesome. I was saying like, man, yeah, come on. All we are is God's vessel. That's exactly right. So this song will. That's that's probably the coolest, one of the coolest things that I've seen um, happen with not only this song but hmm. you know any song that I have. So it's, right. it's a special one. It's called "Find Me Here." She's three sheets to the wind Kicking myself staring at this cross on my skin Too jacked up to just black out in this mess of a bed I made With some girl I just call on my heart Cause I forget her name and There's a preacher on TV saying something about you coming back soon Got me thinking about how if you walked in now, what the hell I'd do? I wish I was on a plane, a hopping train, standing with my thumb in the air, waving down a cab somewhere. Right now, I don't want to be caught in room 316 with a hotel Bible as a coaster underneath my beer. Lord, if you Tonight, 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 you're coming back I hope you don't find me here If I get down on my knees And it ain't too much to ask Could you break the chains And hold me down And get the devil off my back and if you're gonna split that eastern sky, I pray you take your time. Yeah, I promise you I'll make these old blues walk a straight line. I wish I was on a plane, a hopping train, standing with my thumb in the air, or waving down a cab somewhere. Right now, I don't wanna be caught in room 316. Tell Bible as a coaster underneath my beer. Lord, if you decide tonight, tonight you're coming back. I hope you don't find me here. The preacher. 
Read your own TV sayings on the about you coming back soon I ain't got a doubt if you walked in now, man, I'd be screwed I wish I was on a plane A hopping train Standing with my thumb in the air Waving down a cab somewhere Right now I don't want to be Caught in room 316 With a hotel Bible as a coaster Underneath my beer Lord, if you decide tonight Tonight you're coming back I hope you don't find me Hope you don't find me here Tangled up in hotel sheets, three sheets to the wind Kicking myself staring at this cross on my skin Yeah, yeah that's a, a song one. Good Thank you That is a song Oh, man. What? I was thinking about that cross dad, on you your know, skin. Still want to ground yeah, him. I want to ground him for. Yeah, I was riding with him at one time, and Casey, it was me and him and Casey, and uh, we got a call, and, and Casey said he couldn't come because Susan was. Tatum had been sick, and as he was walking out the door, Susan started throwing up, and so Casey's like, I can't come in, y'all. So Tucker's wearing his clothes all bundled up, and. He takes off and he goes, whew, and starts taking off the shirt and he has a new tattoo of a cross on his arm and he didn't want oh, Casey yeah. to see it. <laughs> My dad hates tattoos. How long did you wear sleeves for? Well, at the time I did. Oh, a long time, man. And, well, and it, it scarred me because the first tattoo I, I ever got was a, it's a Bible verse, Psalm 27.1 on, on chest. And, and my dad was out of town. We were in high school. And CJ, my older brother, was, was in town. And... Um, I was like, man, it's a perfect opportunity, CJ. Let's go get a tattoo, man. Dad's out of town. Like, <laughs> let's do it. And I, I talked him into. I mean, if you listen to the song "Brother," it's it's pretty dead on with that story. I mean, I talked him into going downtown. We were like, well, what do we want to get? And I mean, honestly, we opened up the Bible and happened to fall in Psalm 27:1 and saw it. I was like, man, that, yeah, that's great. Let's get that. And uh, we got it. And then my dad got back in town, and I guess he. He already knew. Somebody told him, I guess. My no, aunt. somebody posted it or something. But, yeah. But somebody, out. my sister told me. And we get, he gets in, and and he's like, so uh, y'all got new tattoos, huh? And, and we're like, well, yeah, Dad, but how are you going to get mad at a Bible verse, you know? Like, <laughs> it, this Bible verse means so much to us or whatever. And he's like, oh, okay, cool. All right, CJ, uh, what, what does it say? And... I said, what does it mean, CJ? He said, well, uh, well Dad, I'm, I'm, Tucker I'm going gonna, gonna to learn it. Yeah. He said, I'm going to learn it, Dad. I mean, yeah, Tucker knows it. Good. I'm like, oh, And I mean, you brought up a good point about, you know, like if you're going, you know, don't be a poser if you're going to do that pretty much. You, you know, walk that walk. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But that was, I was, the next day I was, I think it was that first day I was wish, with uh, a songwriter sitting around writing a song with Josh, Josh Thompson. We were sitting in a room. I go, man, yeah, I came home with my kids. They got this tattoo. And I go, man, it's just whatever. They're trying to, you know, and he's like, man, what is it? And I said, it's Psalm 27.1. And he just kind of, I said, man, that's kind of like a, that's like a loophole of tattoos, isn't it? And I said, because I mean, it's a it's a Bible verse. How do you get mad at it? I, like, I go, that was pretty smart of them to, yeah. to do that. You're gonna yeah, do but it. I mean, you got it. I mean, if we don't know what it says, then, then it doesn't yeah. really mean much or nothing. <laughs> so Ryan over here is, is um, he's the guy that I got to thank for when I got out of my last deal. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. All I knew is I wanted freedom to make music and record music. And, and, and he told me right before I got out, he was like, man, why don't you get out? Come, let's, let's, let's go down to, they got a little homemade studio in the basement of an engineer's house that we work with. And um, that's pretty much right when I got out, maybe within that week. First thing I did was hit up Ryan. I was like, hey, man, I'm out. I'm free. I'm a free man. And, uh, 
and we just went in, just me, Ryan, and, and uh, a guy Jordan. named Jordan, who uh, Jordan plays bass and does engineering, and see what happens. You know, I mean, me, me and Ryan, we knew each other, but like we we weren't super close. I mean, like we didn't spend much time together, and um, we recorded a few songs and. Peas and carrots after that. Yeah. It kind of <laughs> seemed something felt special. Something felt, I don't know. It was, just, it was a pretty awesome feeling that we got, and we were all on the same page. And next Jordan thing you was, know. Jordan was uh, a special component of that, too. Oh, dude, that yeah, dude man. is a, he's so good at what he does, man. I mean, not only as a bass player, but his ear for things and his engineering skills. Attention um, to detail. Yeah, it was it was when us one of, three. When one of us get to take a break and go back and sit on the couch, and Jordan doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> He's man of the ship, you know. He's yeah, be on he the gets kind of OCD about it, which is a great quality. Because there's multiple times me and Ryan were just like, yeah, screw it, man. It's, it's good enough. Rock know? and roll, man. And we can't, yeah, right. Ryan, Ryan, I think he got a little frustrated when Jordan's like, yeah, you hear that? That's not, like, you got to go <laughs> in and redo this. And, and Ryan's loophole that he found was like, man, it's rock and roll, man. Just, just let it go or whatever. And, <laughs> And uh, but you got to have a guy like that as part of your team. I mean, and then we spent the next six, shoot, like eight months, just pounding out songs, having fun, and recording them. And we recorded this song after the fact. After we were kind of on a roll and and getting in the groove of things, and I wrote this song with Jeff Hyde and a guy named Ben Stennis, and it's a fun song, cool, cool topics. I think everybody knows a guy that that I'm referring to in the song. I call them one-uppers, and um, we got in there and, and knocked it out and got it grooving, so and we're going to play it. It's called One Upper. There was one open school at the bar, so I sat down right next to him. Some dude it up, dude in a suit and tie. He was two sheets to the wind. We well, started out small talk, kept getting bigger, kind of like his puffed out chest. Every time I'd say something, he'd say something to outdo what I said. Had a fast, fast car, smoked a finer cigar, only drank top shelf. As he got a little louder, went on a little prouder, I was thinking to myself. I got some that money came by, my baby, she's right on the money. The cream of the crap, tip top of the tie, the bees knees with a kiss like honey. Anyhow, shall do me one better, trying to do me one better, best hang it up. As long as I got your loving, I got something. I want up, I can't want up. I say, yeah, I fish a little, and a matter of fact, the other day I caught me biggin'. Before I could say how much my weight he was bragging, bass turning me when As if he didn't know, he looked down at my boots and asked if they were made of real leather. Just as I was about to lose my cool thought of you, and girl, I kept it together. Cause I got some that money came by my baby, she's right on the money. The cream of the crap, tip top, but the top of bees and knees with a kiss like honey. Anyhow, shall I do me one better, trying to do me one better, best hang it up. As long as I got your loving, I got something. I want up, I can't want up. Came by my bed, she's right on the money. Cream of the crap, tip top, but it's out of bees, knees with a kiss like honey. Anyhow, shall I do me one better, trying to do me one better, best hang it up. As long as I got your loving, I got some.
Funky groove. <laughs> this next one is uh, it's one that you guys, the fans, um, really kind of took it and ran with it, and um, kind of gave it legs for me. And, and um, in 2015, I think put a put a stripped down electric live version of me playing this one and um, on YouTube kind of started blowing up and, and um, I've never had the, the chance to really release it um, despite how old it is. Are you but, calling me old? <laughs> I'm calling the song old. But I wrote this with Marla. Um, she came. It was one of the first rights we had. Um, I've known Marla for pretty much my whole life and in my opinion, no offense. I mean, every writer that you write with, there's a different type of style. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you kind of, you write a different type of song with each writer, and you know that. You know, like their style and what kind of what what they have to contribute and stuff. But um, that means about to say something <laughs> bad about all of us. All of us. <laughs> You no, I think, but with, with Marla, she, you, you've always been probably like my, one of my favorite people to write with just because I think we, we both will get, just get lost in that darker poetry type. Yeah. You know, like slower type. Deep just stuff. Deep stuff, yeah. And um, I guess me, I, I tend to gravitate towards that style of song, so, so writing... Writing with Marla is, is always one of my favorite. Me too. Favorite rights. Favorite rights right to write with you. So. And this is one of the first ones we did back in the day, and um, I'm glad we finally get to get it out there. And um, who would have thought it would? Yeah. Five years later. It's she crazy. gonna she gonna she gonna sing with you? Yes. I'm gonna try. Sing the, sing the second verse. And All right. Don't leave me hanging on the chorus. Either. Okay. But um, it's my version of a love song. I don't write, don't write many love songs. But Marla came to me with the idea of it's faithful, and I loved what what you could say behind that, and, and and how you can really write a real love song with that as the topic. You know, it means a little more than just telling someone you look good, or you know. So um, this is a perfect love song for me. Appreciate you letting me let me write it with you. Thank you. Ain't no truck fornication song, but it's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, the song's called Faithful. Girl, I'm able 
be faithful I hate to ask But hell I gotta know Do you see yourself Holding on, on down the road Or do you see us both Hanging on to hope by a tangled rope fraying on both ends Waiting on the memories we stack up To hide the truth till it caves on us It'll cave on us But hey Take the fears, take the doubts, take the don't knows Strip them down all the way to the bare bones Love will either be there or it won't Be faithful It's crazy how my heart beats so damn loud <clears throat> Yeah, great song, yeah. Good. Awesome. So basically, just to clear it all up, man, these, these guys and girl right here are um they're, they're the ones behind the scenes that really um are responsible for for you know i couldn't i couldn't do a lot of what i do without without these guys and and um they're the ones that that have my back and have had my back since day one and nowadays it's it's um it's harder to find Riders in town that that are truly in it for the right reasons and truly in it for the best song and the best you know the best message you can get and instead of going in and thinking about how do they make money off a song or how do they you know shape it to to make it mainstream or anything like that these 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 are some of the best riders in town and and um play a huge role in, in this whole album King for me um, I couldn't have done it, done it without them and um, so I just want to say personally thank you guys for doing this I really really appreciate it it's been a special day absolutely yeah. yes we believe in you buddy yep yeah. all the way appreciate it I believe there was a guy by the name of Waylon Jennings might have said uh, make the music you want to make and the money will come <clears throat> who needs it anyhow <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and this is um the whole project has been really special because of the the timeline and the the journey that that I've had leading up to to this. Um you know, I thought you know, I was frustrated and and wanted to get out all my music, you know, years ago and, and share it with everyone and, and you know, I was, I was pissed off at a lot of a lot of people, probably just pissed off at the world just for not, you know, for, for going through 
what I've gone through that to held me up um, from releasing the music at that time. And, and then I look back and, and realize how much of a blessing in disguise it was because I got time to grow, got time to, to hone in on really who I was, not only as an artist, but as a person and the message I want to, you know, send to people um, when they hear this album. And, uh, and it's just special because a lot of these songs that I couldn't release back then, now at 25 years old, I get to have a whole timeline in, of songs from 2015 that have always been some of my favorites and, and hold, uh, held close to my heart. And, and then through the growth and the experiences and everything, adding songs that are as recent as 2020. So the whole project is, not only is it my heart and soul poured out into this, this project and each song is special to me, but it's also a, a representation of growth and, and development and character. And, um, character, yeah. And, and this song, the song right here, it's kind of the one that I wrote, me and my dad wrote this earlier this year and kind of put the, the whole album full circle and, and, and really is a, a representation of, of the journey that I've been on so far and, and um, the growth as an artist and as a person and, and that I'm grateful for the ups and downs. And in December, my little brother passed away and you know I was always scared of something like that happening because I knew I was, wasn't strong enough to, to get through something like that and, um, and I found out pretty quick that that I, I am not strong enough to get through that alone by any means I, I don't I don't see how anyone I don't think it's possible to get through something like that by solely on your own power and um, so I reached out to the one one person that I knew is stronger than anything and I gave it up and said Lord Jesus if you if you help me man I need your help I just, I just need your help I, I can't do this on my own and um, and what 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 I realized and, and what came out of that is something really un undescribable. I mean, it was more than, it's not just the power of positive thinking or anything like that. The difference that has made in my life and what the strength that he's given me and, and been through it with me to get through a tragedy like this mm -hmm. is something that I lived and I experienced firsthand and I'm still experiencing and living mm -hmm. in that. And it's a powerful, powerful thing. And, and that's really where this song stems from that message and that truth that I've learned and found in, in, in the Lord. I mean, and I knew the only person that I could write this with that would understand and, and who's really in the same boat as me was, was, was my dad. And, and we took it and poured out our hearts into it, really. Hard, hard, hard song to write. Yeah. But, and then but it's a real song. But it's it's uh, this goes out to Clay Clayton King. And that's that's where um that's why I decided to dedicate this album title to to my brother. His middle name was King and um, the impact that he's made in my life on earth and since he's been in heaven is is incredible and the least I could do was have a piece of him front and center on this project so this is um, there, bro. this is a song that kind of capped off the album for me man after after this one and officially knew that we had a full project and it came full circle and um, yeah, it's called I Ain't Without You. You 
You're the sun on my face You're a cool breeze blowing You're a second wind Whispering Keep on going You tug on my heart Laugh in my head You feeling and knowing I ain't without you No, I ain't without you I'm the king of the world I'm a blue red winner I'm a cloud nine fly Got it made smiling I'm a saint not a sinner I'm a lighthouse I'm a fire in a cabin in a Jackson hole winner but I ain't without you no I ain't without you so I keep holding on with everything that got me to every piece of your memory so the world can see I Let me carry on, keep moving on down the road Let them call me strong, but we both know I ain't, I ain't, I ain't without you You left your heart on my sleeve Left a chip on my shoulder Left some off big shoes Left me something to prove And my faith was never bolder I can hear your voice Saying let's do this boy Ain't no such thing as over And I ain't without you No I ain't without you So I keep holding on With everything me to every piece of your memory so the world can see I ain't, I ain't, I ain't without you Let me carry on, keep moving on down the road Let them call me strong but we both know I ain't, I ain't, I ain't without you Never gone. That's my favorite thing about you. And you remind me again and again who I am, and I ain't without you. You're the sun on my face. You cool breeze blowing. You're second wind whispering Keep on going Yeah, that. That's what the music's all about, man, making people feel something. I appreciate y'all tuning in and, and listening, and I'm glad we could give you a, um, a really behind the scenes of what... Um, the unsung heroes, the ones that are, I have to to thank for for everything. I mean, these these guys have had my back, and it's rare to find um, not only writers as talented as as these up here, but also ones that still do it for the right reasons and 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 just want to write the best song and and with no intentions other than writing a good song that 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 touches people and and you know can make a difference and um so thank you guys for for doing this and, and for everything and, and thank you all for tuning in and hope you enjoyed it buying a record maybe yes thank you for supporting you yeah <laughs> and if you want to thank you for it thank you for yeah i mean it's cool to see, you know, when when 
when you when you take the road less traveled and and you stick to your guns and, and do it for reasons other than just trying to have fame and, and money it's a it's a it's a tough road but it but it's cool because you you um, you get to see the who's still standing behind you at the end of the day and that goes to the fans y'all having my back and supporting me I can't thank y'all enough for that it goes for riders the management everyone it takes an army to, to to do what I do and 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 it takes um, especially when 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 you decide to to go down the, the tougher road it, it takes it takes the ones who really are in it for the long haul and and that goes with these guys over here playing behind me Derek Young and, and Jeff Coggins it's um it's uh I'm just blessed to have have y'all part of this and thanks yeah. for being a part of this album that uh awesome is um a piece of me in this album and and, and um thanks for supporting it and stream the heck out of it mm-hmm.